Hello everyone, Alex Ayers here with Hardy Government Affairs, wanting to talk to you today about the role 2023 is going to play in our refrigerant transition. As you all know, the AMAC that was passed in 2020 phases down the production and consumption of HFCs, including uh, all of the major refrigerants that we use today in air conditioning and refrigeration. That means that 2023 is really an important year for us to prepare for this transition, uh, as 2024 is our first major uh, reduction in production of HFCs. So with that reduction in, in HFC uh, refrigerants, we're going to need to prepare for this next generation of refrigerants that will come into play. And that means A2Ls, or mildly flammable refrigerants, will start being used in air conditioning equipment very soon. So for contractors and distributors, this means making sure that you are trained on A2L uh, refrigerants, whether that is from a third party or from your uh, equipment manufacturer. Also for distributors preparing to uh, receive bulk shipments of A2Ls and cylinders, uh, along with pre-charged equipment. So it's really important for uh, everyone to spend 2023 preparing, whether that is going through training or getting your, your updated occupancy permits for your warehouses, uh, making sure that you understand what's, um, what's going to be required as this transition goes on. Uh, and that's going to be partially accelerated by the changing state uh, uh, building codes, uh, where more and more states are adopting A2Ls uh, earlier uh, than than what was maybe expected a couple of years ago. And so what this does is it ensures that we have enough uh, places to install A2Ls for that first major step down. The other side of that is also making sure that we have enough reclaim and recovery. Uh, so it's very important to recover as much of the older HFCs like R410A as possible. So that way we have a adequate supply of reclaim moving into the future years uh, and making sure that no one is forced to replace any equipment early due to a lack of supply. Hi, my name is Phil Johnston. I'm the general manager of the Environmental Business Development Center at Daikin Applied Americas. When talking about refrigerants, I have three recommendations for contractors and other industry professionals heading into 2023. To start, get up to speed on exactly what is shifting and when. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency granted certain petitions that suggest alignment with the state of California transition dates, but the EPA's final rulemaking will be published later in 2023. The first major change will happen as early as January 1 of 2024, when refrigerants with a global warming potential, or GWP, at or above 750, such as R134A and R410A, can no longer be used in chillers for comfort cooling. Direct HVAC systems like rooftops, ground source heat pumps, mini splits, and VRV transition at later dates. The second thing, get familiar with the replacement options. The replacements for R410A are group A2L refrigerants, but not all A2Ls are alike. It's important to look at the performance characteristics of each refrigerant. For example, what's the refrigerant charge, the thermal capacity, or the efficiency? Beyond GWP, these variables have a significant impact on total life cycle climate performance and total life cycle operating costs. With this information, you can help guide your customers to the ideal option for their application. Lastly, seek out training. Organizations such as the ESCO Group, ACA, and RSES offer training on the new refrigerants. These groups and the education programs they provide are a fantastic resource. You're also going to see a wave of new products with low GWP refrigerants from manufacturers throughout this coming year. And most will have corresponding training. It'll also be valuable to get engaged with your local sales offices, your partners, for detailed information and support. That's it for me. Thanks for your time. Have a great 2023. Welcome everyone. This is Chris Forth with Johnson Controls regarding an important regulatory update. Today's topic is the recent EPA announcement regarding the American Innovation and Manufacturing Act, which pertains to the phase down of HFCs and specifically the technology transition proposals, which industry submitted uh, more than a year ago. While we are expecting and have been waiting for this announcement, there are a couple of notable surprises you should be aware of. You might ask what are technology transitions and what do those have to do with the transition to low GWP refrigerants and the phase out of 410A? Technology transitions are prohibitions on certain HVAC sectors, such as air conditioning, VRF, or chillers, to stop production of those products which use refrigerants above a certain GWP threshold. 
Technology transitions are used by EPA to aid in the overall phase down of HFCs covered by the scope of the AIM Act. In this case, EPA is proposing that the air conditioning and heat pump sector stop production of new equipment beginning January 1st, 2025. And I emphasize this is for new equipment. While the 1-1-2025 date isn't a surprise, and we're glad the state hasn't been moved, the surprise is the GWP level of 700. The industry had petitioned, uh, petitioned to HRI to request a maximum limit of 750, not the 700, and the 750 aligns with California and, and other states. Uh, so not sure why uh, EPA went with the 700. While the 700 doesn't negatively impact JCI's low GWP choice of R454B, which has a GWP of around 466, or even that of R32, which has a GWP of around 675, it could impact other refrigerants solutions that exceed 700. Of course, the lower the number, the better, and the lower number could help e EPA achieve its ultimate reduction targets. The bigger news, however, is that EPA is also proposing a one-year prohibition on the sell-through of equipment, in this case, 410A. In other words, EPA is saying whatever new production that is left over after one year would basically be dead inventory. The question this one-year prohibition raises is, will this result in any stranded inventory? EPA is providing a couple of different opportunities for comments, including a webinar and formal comments that can be submitted. The date for the webinar and the formal comments will be 15 days and 45 days respectively after a formal notice has been published in the Federal Register. That date hasn't happened yet, so uh, we'll communicate that when it has. But this is something your trade, you might wanna make uh, your trade organization aware of or even comment directly on. So that's my update today. Thank you for your time. Hello everyone. My name is Jason Ubjut and I am the Director of Industry Standards and Relations with the ESCO Group. I wanna to speak today about the refrigerant landscape heading into 2023. As you may or may not be aware, the HVACR industry is currently going through an HFC phase down. The industry is transitioning to refrigerants classified as low GWP refrigerants. Many of these refrigerants are designated as slightly or highly flammable. Industry standards and codes have been updated to allow this transition to occur in a variety of applications. One of the things to note as we head into 2023 is that the adoption of these updated codes and standards is happening at the state level, and some states are ahead of others. In other words, low GWP refrigerants will be rolled out in some states before they're allowed in others. Check with your local code authority to see how far along your state is in the transition. One final note before I sign off. Just because the refrigerant is flammable doesn't mean the refrigeration cycle changes. However, Updated standards and guidelines have been released for the transport, storage, and safe handling of these refrigerants. Seek out training on these refrigerants. Continuing education is an investment in yourself and your future. Thanks for listening and make it a great day.